The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. While it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. He made the disciples get into the boat. He made them do that. He pushed them right into the storm, and he knew what he was doing. Then, after that, he goes up to the mountain to pray, because Jesus knows, as in his own experience, that life here is filled with storms and they will come. Who has, that ex who has experienced storms in their lives? <laughs> All of you? <laughs> Aren't we a great lot? Okay. And so he goes to the mountain, he prays. In other words, Matthew is saying Jesus is personally interested in each of our storms, and he is there for us. That prayer is putting him there with the disciples in the boat as it puts us with him and him with us, even now in this boat. And so during the fourth watch of the night, that's the time of the night that's the darkest, the storm is at its height and raging and it doesn't seem like it's going to let up, and we're afraid. So Jesus now comes to them walking on water. Not only is it fantastic that he's walking on water, but to the Jew, the water is the place where demons lurk and hide because it has all these creatures that we don't really see. It's a place where demons lurk and hide. And what is, what is he doing? He's walking on the water, symbolic that he is trampling these things for you. It's the place where Leviathan lurks, but it's the place where he is even Lord there. And so he walks on the waters. The disciples think it's a ghost, and they're crying out in fear because they know that this is the place where the demons hide, that must be a demon. No. The book of Job tells us of God. He 
alone stretches out the heavens and treads upon the crests of the sea. Here is your Lord to conquer. So Jesus says, take courage. Do not be afraid. Peter hears the whispering of his conscience saying it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay and we know it's going to be okay because based on what I'm seeing here and him walking in on that water, whatever he says is going to be the right thing to do. It's the voice of the Ten Commandments coming out in our hearts. It's the voice of the church who teaches us truths about morality and the truths about the love of one another, the truths about who God is. That's the voice of conscience. Please do not confuse conscience with your emotions. I feel is not your conscience. How many of you got into trouble by your feelings? Yeah. And so our conscience is something totally different. The voice of our conscience calls to mind all the truths of God and whispers, listen to that one. Listen to him. And so Peter, he says, command me, Lord. In other words, I want your commands. I need your commands now because everything looks like it's falling apart and I need something command. And so, Jesus says, do not fear. If you command me, Lord, I'll come on the water. Come. All right. With my commands, with your conscience in the right place, it's going to be safe. As bad as it looks, that boat and that shore is not as safe as where I am on this water. Because where Jesus is, is always the safest place. However, Peter becomes frightened. Why? You know, sometimes when our conscience tells us to do something, we start to question it. Has that ever happened to you? Mm -hmm. We start to question the conscience. And so what we should immediately do is line it up. What do things like the Ten Commandments say? What does Scripture teach us? What does the church teach us? Look at where those fall into place. And what are we hearing in prayer? And so, Peter starts hearing the whispers. And the whispers are this. You didn't hear correctly. The fear is generated by the fact that we don't like to do the difficult thing. We don't like the cross, and we don't like the suffering. And so this generation says, if it's suffering and cross, it's not good for you because that doesn't feel good. And we start to listen to that voice, and we start sinking. When Jesus questions Peter's faith, I believe he was asking Peter to question his own obedience to conscience. I said, come. And you came, but you started to waver in my commands. You started putting your trust in something else. That's where your problem was. However, this is the beauty of reconciliation, isn't it? When we start to waver, we can say in the words of Peter, Lord, save me. And sometimes our plea for him to save us is as minimal as the whisper of the conscience, or it seems so. But when the temperature gets hot enough and the waters begin to rise up to our nose, then we can shout, Lord, save me. Lord, I am powerless without your help. Lord, my plan 
surely is not working. Now Peter has faith because he's admitted the truth that the commands of the Lord are pure, the commands of the Lord are just, the commands of the Lord are life-saving. When St. Joseph was in a quandary earlier in Matthew chapter 1, having got a message from God in a dream, oh, I'm sure he was having conscience consternations, but what did he do? He did exactly what God told him. Take the child and the mother and bring him to Egypt. And he went. And perhaps God is calling us today on something like that. Take your family and go as I command. And now we know why Sunday after Sunday we are here. Because it is so easy for us to get caught up into the waves and lose sight of the one who could save us and let that desire for the one who saves us bow to something else that may give us a temporary relief but in the long run would make us drown in the squalor of sin. So from Sunday to Sunday we come here to hear the Lord, to hear his command, to hear where he calls us to go, to, give, to hear him give us our assurance to press on. We are afraid, but for all those in the boat who come to hear his command, our fear is quelled, the storm ceases, and we walk on water with Christ. Jesus.